What up everybody, it's Andy with LightNumberShoot.com and today we're going to learn a little bit about sharpening in Photoshop. Sharpening is crucial. I don't care if you're shooting RAW, if you're shooting JPEG, whatever it is you're doing, you need to sharpen your image. But, there are two very important buts about uh, sharpening. Number one, you do not sharpen until you know what size the image is going to be for your output. What I mean by that is, you always have to resize your image prior to applying the sharpening. And the reason behind that is because sharpening works like this. There's not that many tutorials that will show you this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to show you how it works with these three boxes. Now, the first thing I want you guys to notice is obviously that there's a white square, gray square, and a black square. The reason I have these is because sharpening works creating a contrast between pixels. That's what fools our eyes into thinking that the image is sharpened when it really isn't. It's just there's a contrast between these pixels. So let's say, for example, that each one of these was a pixel. Now, let's go up to Filter, Sharpen, and I come down here to Unsharpen Mask. My Unsharp Mask is a really, really powerful tool. It's pretty much in every post-processing software out there. I like it. Not as much as this other method I'm going to show you, but uh, it's really powerful when you know how to use it right. So let's go over this little dialog box really quickly. You have the amount. The amount is the contrast that the sharpening is going to have. And it's going to make sense as soon as I show you how it works. But just remember, it's a darker, you know, the more, I, the sharp, the higher my sharpening amount, the darker my contrasting tones are going to be. The radius is how widespread that sharpening is going to be. So how far of a radius or how many pixels the sharpening or the contrasting line is going to have from the pixels. Don't worry, guys. It's going to make sense uh, as soon as I show you. The threshold brings it all back. If I went overboard on my radius, the threshold just brings it back and just polish it as off, polishes it off a little bit, makes it a little bit smoother of a sharpening. So let's do this. Let's increase our sharpening all the way up to 500%, which is maximum. A quick little tip. If you guys don't know how something works in Photoshop, I always just put it all the way to the max and start comparing my image. But as you can see, I raised it all the way up to 100 to 500% and nothing happened. Nothing happened because my radius is just too tiny. I'm just telling it to be at 0.1 pixels from the edge. So it's just not enough. So let's increase our radius. And when I increase my radius, I want you guys to see what happens. This is a white pixel, this is a gray pixel. For the white, it's going to apply the opposite color around the border. Watch. And for gray, since gray has no opposite, what it's going to actually do is it's going to create opposites. And it's going to do that by adding, check this out, black on one side and white on the other. You guys have all heard of sharpening halos and such. These are the famous sharpening halos. And the sharpening halos happens because that's how sharpening works. Notice in the white, it creates this black halo around it. It does that because black is the opposite of white, and that's the contrast between them. That's what's going to make us. That's what's going to make our eyes think that it's more sharpened. Is that even a word? Yeah, more sharpened. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, look at the gray. Like I told you guys, gray has no opposite, so it creates the opposite and it creates that contrast to make us think that it's sharper. Look at the black. The black it's going to create a white contrast around it because obviously white is the opposite of black. So that's what it's doing to all of your images. It creates an opposite contrast on those pixels making it seem as though the image is sharpened. Alright, so let's go see this thing in real life. So, here we have this image of these macaws. Not the greatest image on earth, but you're going to get my point here. 
The first very important part about sharpening is do not sharpen until you know the size or until the image has been resized to your output size. The second, and it is the most important, is do not sharpen your entire image. Again, do not sharpen your entire image. There is no reason for you to sharpen your entire image. It's one of the main reasons I don't sharpen in Lightroom technically if it's something i just i just need a quick little sharpen and i you know it's just a small little minute thing hey lightroom works great unsharp mask ciao i believe it you but it's so, if it's something i really care about something that really needs to be uh well sharpened then i bring it into photoshop and the reason i do that is because i can selectively sharpen much more controlled so let me show you what i mean guys look at this image it's got a ton of out of focus areas. Why would I want to sharpen that? This is bokeh or bokeh, whatever you want to call it. This is my fast, super fast lens creating this beautiful creamy effect. Why would I want to sharpen that? I just don't, it makes zero sense to me. Look at the bird back here. It's a little bit out of focus. Why would I want to sharpen that out of focus, especially after I just spent all that money on all that on that lens? Why would I do that? It makes no sense to me. So, let me show you with Unsharp Mask how I use it in real life. First thing I do is make a copy of the background layer. Always make a copy of the background layer. Two reasons. You have a reference to the original, and in this case, we're going to be able to mix it in with the original image, which is what I want to do because I'm not doing any more color, I'm not doing anything. This is the final process of this image. So, I'm going to come over to Filter. I'm going to come over to Sharpen, and then Unsharp Mask. And a very, very important point to make is I always zoom in to the sharpened area. It's very important you do that because a lot of times the image, you know, Photoshop for saving power, it's not going to render it as well, or the image is just too small, or whatever the, whatever the reason is, I always zoom in to make sure that the area that I'm sharpening is the way I want it to be. So. When I have my Unsharp Mask window open, I can't zoom in or I can't click on this little um, zoom tool. So I have to do it with a shortcut, which is Control Plus on a PC, Control Minus to zoom out on a PC, and it's Command Plus or Command Minus to zoom out on a Mac. Okay, and to move the image around, I just hold my space bar and all I do is drag. So the most important part of this image, we all agree, is this face. This cute little macaw face, Let's zoom out just make sure, that is where I want your eye to lead into. That's the most important part, and that's what I'm going to sharpen. So I zoom in here, and then I start playing around with my amount. I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle at the beginning, and then I'm just going to start increasing my radius until I'm happy. Okay? If I think it's too much, see how the halos start coming out here? I just start dropping this amount and it'll start diffusing. Okay? And then I can always increase it just a little bit more and start playing with it. Let's just start playing a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. I can always click here, this before and after, before and after. I mean, I'm thinking it's pretty good. This looks like it's a sharpening halo, but it really isn't a sharpening halo. It's just the the shadow. But I do have a sharpening halo all the way around this image. Let me just exaggerate this just a little bit more so you guys can see. You see that up here? That's a problem. So if I was just to click OK and sharpen everything, guess what? That's going to look horrible. And there's even a worse area, which is this. Check this out. I'm really happy with my face, but look, look at my background. Look at This is before and after. I've just sharpened all that noise or all that bokeh or bokeh, whatever you want to call it. I just sharpened all that up. I don't want to do that. It just makes zero absolute sense to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. Oops. Let me just mix with this. I'm going to come back here to my face, which is the only area I really care about. And I'm going to make sure it's perfect. I'm not going to worry about all these other edges or all this other stuff. All right. That looks really good to me. And I'm going to hit OK. Once I hit OK, if you notice, the entire image has been sharpened. Not cool. 
So what I need to do now is I need to create a mask. And I just go down here to my mask. And once I create a mask, you're going to see that it opens up right here. For those of you that don't know what masks are, I'm going to have an entire tutorial on masks. They're singly the most important part of Photoshop. Um, anything that is in white is going to show the effect through. Anything that is in black is going to hide the effect. And what I could do with a mask is I can actually paint in the effects where I want it. So let's start off by turning this this mask completely black because I wanted to hide the sharpening effect from my entire image and I'm going to do that with a shortcut what is the opposite of white black so I'm going to invert those colors with control I on a PC command I on a Mac that'll invert so now it's completely hiding my sharpening effect as you can see and what I want to do now is I want to click on the mask I want to go to my brush tool B is a shortcut or just click on the brush up here I want to make sure that I have a big brush and I want to make sure that I have zero hardness I want to cause that transition of sharpening and all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint white where I want my sharpening to happen notice how these le these uh, leaves poor bird these feathers are not sharp so I'm just not going to go over there I'm just going to feather it with my brush and just leave the areas that I really think should be sharpened like this that might be a little bit too much but we can always lower the opacity later next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan my image and I'm gonna notice that down here I have a leaf that needs to be sharpened because this is in its focus plane so I'm just gonna take that and sharpen that okay and you're gonna notice that I have another leaf here that is technically sharp but not as sharp so I don't want to sharpen completely so what I want to do is if I was to paint with black it would hide this effect if I paint with white it's gonna show the effect 100% but if I paint with 50% gray it's gonna show a 50% opacity so I'm gonna paint that with gray and notice this little leaf down here is also sharp but not super duper sharp. I'm just going to lower my brush size a little bit and just going to go over it. All right, let's zoom out. Let's just make sure that there's not another area that I completely want sharp. Um, nope. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The only thing is I might have gone just a little bit overboard on the face. So all I could have to do is drop my opacity just a little tiny bit. And my image is sharpened selectively to the areas that I want it to be I mean look at the difference between this and this that's zero sharpening right that sharpened selectively and check this out this is me getting rid of the mask look at my background I mean just look at it before and after I mean that's horrible so I'm just gonna sharpen selectively so that is trick number two now I told you guys Unsharp mask is really, really powerful. I like it, but there's a technique that I like even better, and it's only because it gives me even more control over the sharpening. So let me show you that now that I have you here for such a long time. So let's get rid of this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to create another background layer. I'm going to merge these two. I'm going to call this unsharp mask, just so we can we have a reference to come back to. I'm going to click my little eyeball to turn it off completely. So now what I need to do is I need to make a copy of my background layer. Always make a copy of my background layer. And I'm going to come up to this thing called Filter, Other, and High Pass. When I click on High Pass, you're going to see that the entire image turns gray. When we go over blending modes in, in this Photoshop 101 section that I want to create, uh, you're going to understand a little bit more about blend modes. But the entire image is going to be gray. The way high pass works is it's actually looking for the edges of pixels you see how everything is it's, it's like all the edges are here here's all this little stuff I like to lower my radius until it's barely visible and that is only me because I like complete control so I think at 1.7 we're pretty good on this image I click OK I'm gonna zoom out and you're gonna see that the entire image is still gray 
What I need to do is come over here to my blend mode of that and switch it over to soft light. Now let me zoom in. Unsharp mask, I mean, um, high pass is a lot more subtle than unsharp mask. It can be just as dramatic, but the way I do it is a lot more subtly. So let me show you before and after, before and after. It's a very small difference, very minute difference. If I want to duplicate this effect, all I have to do is hit Control J, and it'll keep multiplying that sharpening effect. And you know, the more I'm doing it a whole bunch of times, just so you guys see the effect. I mean, look at that. That's sharp. There's a ton of halos and a ton of stuff. So obviously, I don't want it to be that powerful. Let's throw all this stuff away. But before I do my duplication, I want to do the exact same thing I did with the sharp mask. I don't want to sharpen everything. So again, I want to create a mask, I want to invert it again, and I want to paint it. And just for sake of demonstration, guys, I'm going to go really fast. So I just want to paint where my sharpening goes. Okay? So let's just say it's right here. Okay? So there you go. There's my mask. Now, if I want to duplicate the effect, all I hit is Control-J on a PC, Command-J on a Mac to duplicate that layer. I'm going to zoom in until I'm extremely happy with that effect. If I go overboard a little bit, I have three layers of opacity control that I can lower or raise, you know, to suit my liking. All right, once that is selected, all I have to do is merge all the layers. I select them all, and I hit Control E on a PC, Command E on a Mac, and that is my, let me change this name to High Pass. Pretty happy with that sharpening. It's a little bit subtler, but I like it. So this is high pass, and this is unsharp mask. High pass and unsharp mask. As you can see, the unsharp mask has a little bit more contrast. It looks a little bit more sharpened, which could be cool. Um, I personally like the high pass because it's a lot more natural of a look. Uh, so it's up to you guys to decide whichever the two you guys like. In any case, that's how you do it. Just remember. Two very important things. You don't sharpen until you have your output size. And number two, you do not sharpen your entire image. Wait, unless you need your entire image sharpened. But most of the time, you don't. Use sharpening like you use vignette. Make your eye lead into the area that you want it to be. Um, and that's how I do it. That's it, guys. Over and out. Sorry my tutorials are taking forever. Follow us on Twitter. Sign up for Creative Live. Peace. Peace. She's held in heels. Just spin your wheels. Caught in her revolving door.